Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to show you how to cast a baitcaster. I'm not saying I'm gonna, you're going to be a pro by the end of this, but you'll have the fundamentals at least. No, this is not an expensive baitcaster, and this is not necessarily an easy bait to throw. This is a spinner bait. It's just one by Northland. Super simple, just a black spinner bait. And it's cold outside, bite's not really there, so I'm going to try to show you how to cast. Now this is a Fluger Monarch rod in medium heavy seven foot. You can only get this with a combo. I've basically fished this rod so much that the reel broke. This is the Luz Classic Pro, right there as you can see. And then I'm just using some 30 pound braid with a 12 pound mono leader. So if you want to follow along, you are welcome to. You can pick up that exact setup. I will try to link everything down below in the description. So first suggestion would be when companies usually send them, they send them with no brakes on. And the reason for this, if you have your brakes all the way on and you're keeping tension on them and there's a possibility that they will wear out quickly if you're storing them for a long period of time with your brakes on. So if you do decide to basically store your gear, turn your brakes down at least a bit so it doesn't put as much tension on them. Now with magnetic braking systems, it's not as important, but still do loosen the tension now. It's just something you can do to prolong your gear's life. All you're going to want to do is start off on 10 and this is an exercise, start your brakes off on 10 and slowly work your way down. Your knob, if you have a knob style bait caster, turn those all the way up to max. And this is just gonna assure that you won't get a backlash even if you don't thumb it. So just get comfortable on max brakes, take a couple casts. It's basically gonna be exactly like casting a push button. As you can see, I didn't thumb it, nothing like that. And that will just get you used to the motion but don't train that too much because you're training bad habits, but just get comfortable to that motion, which is pushing the button, casting, transferring hands, or so like if you're right-handed, you switch to your right hand and you cast like that. Whereas if you're left-handed or a left-handed bait caster, you'd always just cast with your right hand, if that makes sense. It just gets you used to that motion. You're gonna be doing it a lot, and if you don't get everything down, you're never going to cast as proficiently as you would if you got everything down. After you do that, what you can do is you can come over here to your tension knob and this right here, this little knob on your side of the reel, you may be wondering what that is. There's a little pin and it pushes on your spool and it basically just helps control your spool. You may be asking what's the difference between the braking system. The braking system helps you stop. It also helps to start whereas the tension just keeps tension on that spool the entire time so that the it, you can actually keep up it's fish well i'm sorry i might be quiet for a second i want to catch a fish is that just a bunch of weeds and i'm trolling myself probably but anyways i'll do one more cast just to make sure Gotta make sure. So, get that down there. Bring this one in kind of quickly. So back to what we were talking about. Basically, this side, or whatever braking type you have, is helping you both stop that spool from spinning and help the start of it so that it's a bit smoother. And it just helps you transition between the start and also transition into the finish. And the tension knob is basically keeping tension on your spool the entire time. Because if your spool is spinning faster than your line can go off, then you're going to have a something called a backlash. Or if it's really bad, a bird's nest. So if you hear those terms, that means that basically you got, well, you got a little knot in your reel. Or it could be big, depending on how bad it is. I'm going to do something very painful, which I hate doing, and I'm going to purposely get a backlash. This is a backlash, so this one's not bad at all. So you just keep your thumb down, and you can just pull out line, and it will come out just like so. Pull a little past that, put some tension on the line, and reel that in. If you have it a little worse, you may have to like pick it out. Every time you get a backlash, you get better at getting them out. And if you don't feel like getting it out, it's going to be a pricey investment because you're always going to be cutting line. So just get used to it. 
because you will not be mad that you played around with this and you learned your bait caster because, well, if you're taking hundreds of thousands of casts and you want to learn how to skip, yes, you can skip with the bait caster even if it's cheap. I will link a company down below that is both affordable and high quality. Back on the subject. You have a couple options on how you can set your tension knob. Now, one option on how you could do is you could tighten it all the way up and loosen it and just keep casting and adjusting it that way, but that's really ineffective. All you want to do is tighten it up until your bait's falling pretty slow, like slower than if you dropped it. So, if you can tell the speed if, if you drop something, like so, as long as it's falling slower than the speed of something dropping, you're pretty well set but you don't want it too, too slow. So that might be even a little slow, so just back that off. Tighten it up to get it slower, loosen that knob to get it faster. So there we go, that's about set. And then your brakes, again, you can get them set down because every bait caster is different. We're still at the point where I'm only on 10. So I will work my way down to all the way I usually run from four to seven, depending on the, how heavy of a bait I have, and also how windy it is. If you want to get the most castability, I would suggest keeping it at, depending on, every bait caster is gonna be different, but keep it about mid to one or two below mid. So you can go by increment and a half, meaning that there is a click, and there's a half click, and a full click, and a half click, which that's just, allows you to adjust your brakes a little more efficiently. I'm going to keep it at around four, but you just kind of play around with it. And if you're newer and you're having troubles with it, definitely turn that number up to a higher percentage. And if you are wanting a little bit farther of a cast and don't need as much assistance, definitely turn that down and it will definitely be able to up your cast ability. Not to say that you can't learn with the low brakes, but it just makes the learning curve a lot less painful if you up your brakes to a little more assistance and slowly wean yourself off of them.